when it comes to putting on any kind of event, when it comes to doing anything that's important to you, there is no question in my mind that if you don't have a fantastic team, it's never going to come off. It'll all fall on you. You won't be able to enjoy it leading up to it as the event's going on and afterwards. If you don't have a bunch of people around you to just calm you down, to do the things that aren't your specific specialty, just to buy into your vision and remind you what your vision was to begin with because once you dive into something that was your idea, it's very easy to get just swept away by the details of everything that needs to happen. Let's take my contest for example. Everyone knows a contest requires very specific elements. You have to have contestants. Well, that's easy at the division level because you're basically grabbing everybody who won from their areas and if they don't come, luckily I had all the first place people from all the area contests show up. But that doesn't usually happen, so you follow up and you get the second place. And if you have a good contest master or chief judge, they'll often help you out with those types of things. You need to have great functionaries. The contest master and chief judge, they're people you have to be able to count on. And you have to have judges. And in this case, the judges either had to be equal representation from within the division, meaning one from each area or two from each area, so equal across the board, or everybody from outside the division, which is the way I decided to go. Right off the bat, before thinking of anything else, those elements have to be there. And if I had to focus on all of those elements by myself, there's no way I could have done everything else I wanted to do with this contest, which was to make it fun and make it warm and make it memorable. I wanted The main goal I wanted was it to be a very memorable contest for everyone to say, this contest was different than anything I've ever seen or remembered, better than anything I've ever seen put on at the division level. The good news is that after this contest, that was a lot of the comments I got. Andy Brown, many of you know him, he's in the Ace Club with me now. He was actually at one point a member of our Articulators Club. Really good guy. Been in Toastmasters for five years at DTM, seen a lot of contests. He was my contest ma master on the day of. I wasn't going to pick them originally, actually. That was Gene, the division governor. But when I heard that he picked Andy, I said, fantastic. That's somebody I don't have to worry about. Andy showed up and was like Sinatra. He didn't have to set up the room, he didn't have to test the microphone, but once the microphone was on and he was in front of the audience, he was perfect. And everybody was mesmerized by his usual professional and fun style, and he let it be. After the contest, he came up and said, by far the best contest I've ever seen. Followed that up with an email and a phone call, all to tell me that it was just the best contest at the division level that he'd ever seen. District conferences have a lot better attendance, they have a theme naturally, so there's a lot going on at the district level that's different. At the club level, as we all know, it's naturally warm. We're all having fun, we all know each other. But it's those area and division levels that I feel like get neglected. And I think I finally found a way to do it that's really fun. But again, it couldn't have happened. I had amazing people. Kathy got the word out. We had 105 people at the division contest. Wow. At least. Wow. At least. People wow. were in and out. Every time I counted, it was right around 105. <laughs> Amazing, fantastic job. We had, we, I had, excuse me, I had an amazing co contribution as she got the word out for silent auction. Lots of things about silent auction. We made $300 for the contest. The contest made a profit, by the oh, way, wow. which I've never had a part of before. When I did area contests as area governor, I always had to come at least a little bit out of pocket mm. for things, even with getting contributions from clubs. I got no contribution from any club specifically, but between 50-50 and the, and the silent auction, made over $400 total. It's amazing. I had, of course, Dave Barrett, who came up with this video that is just so funny. It is, the theme was Camelot, and that's a specific musical, but he picked a, a number from Monty Python's Search for the Holy Grail, which was then transferred to their play, Spamalot. Uh -huh. So it was very appropriate for Broadway, and it's 
King Arthur riding towards Camelot, only to have an opening musical number from the Knights of the Round Table saying, we're Knights of the Round Table, we dance whenever we're able. It was a, it's a hysterical number, they're terrible dancing, they're doing silly things, and that's how we opened up the contest. I think the table topics got incredible response because everyone was already in the mood to laugh, so every little thing people were ready to laugh at. A lot of fun. And I had Michelle Dolly. Last person I want to cite specifically because without her, I don't know that it would have been Camelot. I gave her a budget because she, I could tell she was really into this. She really wanted to put on a great contest. So I gave her a $150 budget. I didn't know if we'd be able to meet at the time, but I just wanted to see what she could do with it. With $148, she had freestanding nights. She had jousters. She had the tables decked out in royal purple. It was absolutely gorgeous, so amazing. And everybody was blown away when they walked in the room. Scott Hohen, who planned the Division C contest that was Greece themed, it was very well done. Walked in and went, no way we're winning the decorations contest. By the way, I didn't even know there was a decoration contest <laughs> going on among the divisions. But I, I hear we're the front runner. <laughs> Betty Green also, I should say, was an amazing chief judge, stepped in for Gail Hill Smith, who had a conflict. What does this all come down to? If you're doing anything where you need to get something done, trying to do it all yourself, maybe you can do that. But if you don't have a great team, my guess is it won't be as good or as fun if you pick some fantastic people who can buy into your vision and really want to achieve it. If they're self-starters, more is the better. Most of these people, I did not have to be on top of them being like, where's this, where's that, whatever. They were on top of me saying, I've got this, I've got that, what are we going to do with this? Should I be able to use that? Where can we plug this in? And it just brought them together and let them go and just kind of like, well, maybe this there, maybe that there, well, I don't know if I'm going to do that. But as long as they were all together in a room, I knew we were going to have an amazing contest. Bring a great team with you. There's no way your HPL in Toastmasters or in life, you're a failure. Thank you.